Hi everyone, how are we going? Chase, Great, Mr. Moss, how are you? Oh, <laughs> who invited you? You go away and just leave leave the leave the real athletes to do some work there, Luke. Go and uh, go and do some bicep curls in your gym. Hey guys, hey Sarah, Chase and Kai, how are you going? Reed, that's a nice golf bag, mate. Excellent. <laughs> All right, let's fire away. So I want to get right into it tonight. Um, I've been going a bit over time, as you guys know. Uh, this is our last Tuesday session. We've still got Thursday. We'll do some uh, cardio. We'll get our heart rate up a little bit, some skipping and some reactive stuff. But tonight we've got our strength session. So we can get straight into our mobility. If there's any latecomers, that's fine. I've got the meeting room off. So I'm just going to spot, spotlight my camera now. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free uh, to just chuck your microphone off mute and fire away or, or use the chat. I won't come to the chat that regularly, but I can usually see the, uh, the questions from where I am. So grab your foam roller uh, or if you're using a couch or a chair or something as a guide, that's okay as well. So I like to use my foam roller and do my ankle mobility. Got my big toe 10 centimeters back from the foam roller, keeping my heel squarely on the ground and I'm just pushing my knee gently into the foam roller. So I'm getting that really nice shin angle. If I want to apply a little bit of pressure with my hands, I can. Okay, so just gently pressing down on the top of the knee, guiding it forward. You do three on either ankle or either foot. Again, trying to keep that heel down and swap legs. So again, a little bit of gentle pressure is okay. This is one of those rare sort of situations where we want to encourage that knee over toes because uh, we do get into this position obviously when we're in a sprint takeoff when we're landing from a high jump things like that so we need to make sure we've got that ankle range of motion when we when we push back into these positions all righty next one we know is our spider-man squat for lack of a better terms or our mobility squat all right so Again, I'm going to go bending at the hips, so I get a little hamstring stretch to begin with, so I come down sideways. If you can keep your, your knees straight, keep your, your legs locked and come down as far as you can, just hang for a position and just sort of wait, get a bit of a hamstring stretch, take a couple of breaths. If you can't, tap, if you can't touch your toes, you can bend your knees, put your fingers underneath, fingertips underneath your toes. So now I'm right down deep in the bottom of this squat. Uh, perfect world we have heels on the ground but if we don't have heels on the ground you can have your heels up that's okay from here I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get comfortable in this position here um, I want to I want to sit in this position for a second and just rock around a little bit just move around from side to side shift your weight from left foot to right foot and back across uh, and that's just gonna help move our hips open up our hips a little bit and then what I want to do is push my elbows into the inside of my knees. So I'm gonna just apply some gentle pressure and I'm gonna push back against my elbow. So I'm pushing back with my knees and that's just helping activate my adductors and the muscles of my groin. From there, we're keeping our left arm under, uh, our left elbow pressed into our left knee and our left hands and fingertips underneath our left foot and we're turning to our right, pointing our arm up to the roof and looking up at our right arm. I want you to take two deep breaths here. Okay, coming back down and we're doing our right arm now. So again, pushing our right elbow gently into our right knee, turning and looking up to our left, rotating through our lumbar spine, a little bit of our, our T-spine here, and two deep breaths. And coming back down, standing up and shaking it out a little bit. We need our uh, mini bands. All right, so grab your mini bands for our next three to four exercises. So we're going to do our crab walks, we're going to do our bench squat, and then we're going to do our glute bridges, all with our mini band. First set's going to be around our ankles. Okay, so chuck the mini band around your ankles. Oh, Shep. Hey, Shep. I haven't seen you in a while, mate. How you going? Good to see you. All right, back around our ankles. We've got our crab walks. You guys know this one by now, all faithful. 
bend your knees, sit down into a nice defensive stance, arms wide so we get that shoulder blade activation as well. Okay, and we're just pushing out, defensive slide. Five to our right, I'm just gonna do five because then otherwise I'll go out of the screen. Five back to our left. So again, I can see a couple of you. Zach, you're going too quick, mate. As always, it's not a race, mate. It's not a race, stay down low, chase. I need you to get down low and push those legs out, okay? Your knees are getting too close together. Everyone else is looking pretty good. So again, with all these movements, especially when we're not working on cardio, it's about quality, not quantity, okay? So again, I'm gonna do my second set here. I've got my knees bent, I'm sitting in my imaginary chair, arms wide, and I'm stepping out slowly, and I'm controlling that foot as it, as it comes back. So. Just like we teach you in Aussie hoops and when you're under 10s, under 8s, defensive slides are big to bigger, big to bigger. That big portion, okay, so I go from a big gap in my feet here to a bigger gap. As I bring it back to big, we need to be really conscious of not just letting our foot get flung in like this, okay? You control the band, don't let the band control you, okay? So that constant tension on the band is really important because that means my glutes are activated. Okay, we've got our jab steps. So we're into our jab steps. So we're swinging the ball through, hip to hip, ripping across, jab step forward. Okay, again, I'll go side on. Really important that when we rip here, we push up onto the ball of our back foot. Okay, so we're simulating that sprint takeoff and we're activating our hip flexors here. All right, so we're swinging from hip to hip. We're activating those hip flexors, those muscles there, okay, at the interior of our core. They often get forgotten about and they don't get warmed up. All right, so we're 10 on either leg, 10 right, 10 left. Swing through, imaginary ball. If you've got a basketball, you can swing it and jab step. All right, if you've done the jab step forward, and we've got just a, a little kickback, okay? So this one doesn't have to be like a jab step. You're just pushing back onto the ball of that back foot. So you get a little bit of a, a calf stretch, okay? But I want you to make sure you're flexing that glute as well. So kicking back, flexing that glute. See how my right leg stays nice and straight, okay? And I'm able to push into the ground like a, almost like I'm taking off in a sprint. So I stay down nice and low, and I push off. I'm squeezing that right glute. Once I've done 10 on my right, I do 10 on my left. Make sure you keep your band on after this, because our first exercise is our box squat. I haven't had a really clear look through the, like who's here tonight, but if we've got any 16s, 18s, uh, even top age 14s that are, have done, you know, probably one full block of training to this point. If you've got any weight, okay, if you've got a kettlebell, dumbbells, uh, medicine ball, something you want to use as a resistance when we're doing our squats, please, uh, please make sure you've got that as well before we start our, our strength portion of our program. So I can see now, yeah, we've got a couple of 16s here. Yep, Henry, how you going, mate? Couple of older 14s as well. Um, look, really, based on you guys, use your best judgment. All right. If you've been if you've been doing sessions regularly now for some time, body weight sessions, um, feel free to grab some uh, some extra resistance. Okay. Right. We're into our squats. I'll just duck waddle back here now. I've still got my band, but I'm moving my band up above my knees. All right, bands up above my knees. Again, I don't let my knees get pulled together by my band. That constant resistance, okay, that constant tension, I need the band to be tight at all times. All right, we're doing our sets today because we're in an overload because we've got a rest next week. Our sets today are three sets of 10 for the squat. So last week we did three sets of eight. So we're adding two sets progressively overloading. So three sets of 10 today, three sets of 12 on the glute bridge, uh, we'll do three sets of as many as possible on the push-ups again. Split squat, we jump to 10, so three sets of 10. Plank, we'll probably do three sets of 90 seconds again because that's pretty extreme. Um, and we'll finish off with three sets of calf raises. So, as always, when we're doing three sets, 
Come down, Luna. As always, I'm going to be doing three sets. I'll do the first one with you, and then I'm going to come and look at you guys for the second and third, or we'll catch the third for some of you. So again, feet shoulder width apart. All right, and we're coming down into our squat. If you don't have resistance, you can add resistance by adding time. So I want you to count three on the way down. One, two, three, and explode up. All right, let's go for 10. Three, explode up. One, two, three, explode up. Good job. One, two, three, explode up. Two, three, you can even add an isometric, like hold at the bottom. Isometric means no movement, just tension on the muscles. So you would sit at the bottom here, hold for a count, and then explode up. You need to get really comfortable being in these low squat positions. Knees bent, hips bent, back straight, chest up, sitting in that position before exploding out of it. Again, keeping the tension on the band. So if I go front on, you won't see my knees knocked together at all. That's what we can't see. So we sit down. Explode up. Two more for me, and then I'm coming to watch your second and third set. Zach, that's not a squat. That's not a squat, mate. That is not a squat. It's not a race. Sit to an imaginary chair. Go get that stool you use to jump off. And if you have to sit and touch your bum back to the couch or to a chair, do so. Yeah, there you go. Sit your butt back on that, just touch your butt down to that and then come up, that's a proper squat. Good boy. All right guys, good work, that's good read. Perfect mate, nice and slow. Job Chase, just Chase tonight. Good mate, good slow movement down. Job Henry. Good Matty Pole Glaze. Textbook form as always Matty, good job. Good job Sarah. Look after that back as well, Sarah. Okay, just be conscious of that movement. Don't do anything that's gonna, gonna hurt you back. Work, guys. Job, Cam. Awesome, guys. Really good form. So again, we can always add resistance in a number of ways. So we've got resistance right now for our glutes because we should still have our band around our knees. You can add resistance in, in terms of time. So time under tension. So we go slowly down to the bottom of that squat. So we reach the bottom position um, a little bit slower. You can also add resistance by holding in that bottom position. Um, so there's a number of ways we can add resistance before we actually need to add weight, okay? Once you get proficient at the movement and your knees are tracking in the right direction, your back stays straight, your chest stays up with these squats, um, then you can start to add some resistance in the form of external load, which is, you know, kettlebells and weights. Really important we get that form right. Good, Matt. Just try and keep that back straight a little bit. You're getting a little bit of curve in your spine, just almost overextending a little bit, like arching your back a little bit too much. It's not too much of a problem now. It could be in the future if we start to add resistance. All right, guys. Now you're doing a plie, Zach. Knees are going too wide. All right, so we should be, we've got three sets of 10 here. And again, we're making sure our knees are tracking in line with our toes. We make sure we sit. I know there's a lot to remember, but if you just imagine like you're sitting back to an imaginary chair and then exploding up as quickly as you can. If you are sitting back to a chair or you're using a bench, I can see a few of you are using a bench or a chair as a guide, that's okay. When you sit back, don't sit your weight back fully. So don't recline into the chair. So you sit back, and if I was to use my foam roller as a guide, as I often do, all right, if I'm gonna sit back, I just wanna touch, almost just touch my butt down to it and come back up, okay? I don't wanna sit, I don't wanna actually sit down on my foam roller and take a break, okay? Because then that lets all the tension that we've just built up, that lets all the tension off. If I just use it as a guide for depth, and I touch my butt back to it and stand up, that can be a really good way to use a foam roller or use a chair. Okay, I'm gonna move on. I know a couple of you are still doing your uh, third set. That's okay. We're gonna move on to our glute bridges. So again, here we've got three sets of 12. Deep three sets of 12. So we come down, we know we do this one from the ground. You guys know better than anyone, this puts me in danger of Luna attacking me. So I'm gonna go really quickly. Okay, again, making sure I can twist to my side and touch my heels or my Achilles. That tells me my feet are about the right distance away from my bum. 
squish that imagine. Uh, sorry, don't squish that imaginary grape. Just have a little bit of pressure on that imaginary grape. Okay, just a little bit of pressure, but don't squish the grape. You should still feel the grape. Push through your heels and hips up to the sky. Okay, gently back down, rolling one vertebrae at a time and pushing back through your heels. Hips up to the roof and again, making sure our knees, making sure our knees don't, don't go too close together. So our knees don't touch, but they also don't flare too far apart. All right, so I'm gonna push through my heels. I'm gonna do my first set. I'm gonna come watch you guys for the second and third. Hopefully Luna doesn't eat my face. All right, here we go. There's one, you can hold at the top as well. So really come to the top here, squeeze your glutes at the top, control your breathing. Uh -oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. Now, look at this weight for me. Get off me. Sit, sit, sit. Oh. So we're doing three sets of 12, pushing through your heels, hips to the roof, hold at the top there and squeeze your glutes for a count. So a little bit of extra activation. <laughs> Last one for me. Thank God I can get away from the floor. Come on, watch you guys. Here we go. So you should be on your second or third set now. About to start your second. Good job, Zach. Good job, Chase. We've got two Chases. Good job, Chase Johnson. Good job, other Chase. Shep, I can't see you. Good job, Sarah. Again, hold that position at the top of and squeeze your glutes. Good job. Pushing through your heels. Good job, Cam. Again, quality, not quantity. Maddie, you can probably move your heels in a little bit. Just get that shin angle a little bit more vertical. That's better. Hips up to the roof. Good job, Reed. Good control, mate. Nice, slow, yep. So again, similar to our squats, you can push up so you can squeeze your glutes up at the roof explosively and then go slowly on the way down just to get that time under tension. So whenever we want that time under tension, we're talking about loading through the eccentric. Essentially what that means is concentric. If I'm talking about a squat, concentric is where I push up Okay, so where my quads shorten, okay, so they contract, so concentric. Eccentric is where they lengthen, my quads lengthen. So when I'm doing a squat, the eccentric phase is actually the downward phase, okay, and then it's the upward phase. We always want that to be explosive. So with a glute bridge, okay, this downward phase where we lower our hips back down to the ground, that needs to be slow because the glutes are stretching and we want that stretch to be controlled. And then the concentric phase is the explosive phase we want where we're snapping our hips. Good job, guys. Good work. Okay. We're moving through that. You might be up to your third set or are you done? Sarah, Shep, you guys give me a thumbs up. Are you guys done waiting for the next exercise? Yeah. All right, resistance fans off. If you need to grab a drink, grab a quick drink. Otherwise, we're into our push-ups. All right. I'm going, to do, I'm going to really quickly do a set, and then I'm going to be really strict on form tonight, okay? Because it's our last session. You guys have got two weeks off, but you've still got access to these training programs on our website. So I'm going to be really strict on form. We're doing three sets, as many as possible. All right. But I'm going to be a Hawkeye, and I'm going to be coming around and checking and seeing what your form's like. Because if I see anyone put up 80 or 90, <laughs> for the three sets and their push-ups look like this. Okay. Where it's just your head bobbing. All right, that's not what I want. I'd prefer you to go on all fours and come and move through a full range of motion, bringing your chest to the ground, okay? Or be on your knees with your hips locked in, moving through a full range of motion, controlling the movement, controlling your breathing, than to doing them half like doing them not properly, okay? Form is important, all right? So I'm gonna do one set here on my toes. You know the three options we've got on all fours. 
we've got on our knees with our hips locked in, so we take our knees back from our hips, or we're up onto our toes is the last level. All right, I'm going to do one set. I'm going to try and get 15. That's a realistic goal for me if I'm doing them strictly. Here we go. That's one. That's two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Thirteen. Two more. Fourteen. Fifteen. All right, 15 pretty good push-ups. I'll take that any day of the week. Really good, Sarah. Good job. Good job, Chase. All right, Zach, we're not counting those, mate. Not counting those. Not enough bend in your elbows. I appreciate you trying to do them up on your toes. Come to your knees if you can. Good job, Matty. Good job, Reed. Even if you do two or three on your toes, if you're confident you can get one or two good ones on your toes, do a couple on your toes and then come to your knees and do the rest. That's fine. Really good effort. Make sure you challenge yourself. That's a bit better, but Zach, good job. Remember, we want our elbows, when we're doing these, our elbows should look a little bit more like a jump shot, okay? So they're here. They're not here. We all know how to shoot. We all know how to shoot a basketball pretty well. And we know that that's not right. Okay, but we know elbows, they don't have to be tucked right in, okay? When you shoot a jump shot, elbow doesn't have to be tucked all the way in like that. It can be slightly out, okay, but it can't be chicken wing. So a good way to think of it is point your fingertips up. Point your fingers up to the roof, and that's how you should start. So then I bring my hands to the ground, and my fingers are pointing that way, okay? They're not pointing in at each other. If my fingers are pointing in at each other, I know my elbows are going to flare out too wide. Good work, guys. We've got three sets, as many as possible. Keep working through those. That's perfect form, Chase. Perfect form, mate. Rock solid. Well done. Good, Shep. Again, just watch those elbows, mate. Where are those fingers pointing? Those elbows look like they're coming at me. That's a bit better. Point those fingertips forward. Point them the same way your head's pointing. Good, Matt. Excellent. Henry, I'd give you some feedback, but you look like you're doing it from the back cave, so I can't really see you, mate. It's all good. <sighs> you're in the back cave. I can't see you. Good job, Reed. If you've done three sets, our next exercise is split squat. So lunges, grab a quick drink while everyone else finishes off. And we're into our split squat, so single leg squat. We've got three sets of 10. Three sets of 10. We're making pretty good time, but I wanna move through these. So I'm gonna keep going. You guys, if you're getting a drink, keep an eye on me. Again, we always start from the ground up here. So come into a lunge position. I've got my toes. What's that message? Oh, the lights break. No worries, Henry. All right, so I've got, my, I've got my toes flexed, okay? So I'm not like, I don't have my back foot flat, toes flexed. I've got this front shin, it's pretty close to vertical, okay? But if you need to bring the heel back a little bit so you get a little bit of forward shin, shin angle, that's fine. We're doing 10 on each leg. So I'm just gonna push up from here, squeeze my front quad and my back glute. Front quad, back glute. Wanna come up totally. Drop back down and let's do 10 on either leg. Uh, Make sure, again, my hips, basically my hips just go up and down, okay? They don't go forward and back. My hips don't go forward and back. My weight really just shifts up and down. And I'm on the ball of that back foot, so I'm in like a sprinter position, and I'm squeezing that glute at the top of my lunge. Really good, guys. Keep working. I'm doing the first set with you, and then I'm coming to look. Again, guys, we're having a break for two weeks here. That's just to give you guys a breather from Zoom more than anything, because I'm sure you do a lot with school and stuff as well. That doesn't mean that these sessions have to stop. You can do these sessions in your own time. You know how to do them. The PDFs are all on the website. They're pretty easy to find. If you just type in Junior Blue Strength and Conditioning, I guarantee it'll be the top search option. You can find these programs for 16s and 18s. And sorry, 12s, 14s, and 16s, and 18s. There's two separate sets. <clears throat> Good 
Good job. 10 on each leg. I'm coming to watch second and third sets. Work guys, looking good. I'm watching on my laptop as well. It's a bit of a bigger screen. Good job. So the other thing, the unspoken thing, a little bit about lunges, I can see it in a couple of you that are facing forward, is knee stability. Something to just be conscious of uh, as we go away and we break for a couple of weeks, is when we do a lunge, we're essentially, for a portion of the movement, we're putting a larger percentage of our body weight on this front leg. Okay, so we come down here, we're putting a bit more weight on that front leg, okay? And if you watch yourself in the camera, if you're facing the camera and you do a lunge, okay, or you look into a mirror, pay attention to your kneecap, all right? That can tell a really important story. So if my kneecap, I'm coming down and I'm starting to put load through that knee, probably around 60% of my body weight, so not a lot more than half, but just a bit more than half, and the further down I come now, I've probably got 60, 70, 65%, 70%. When I get to about here, I've got about 70%, 80% of my body weight. If my knee here starts to deviate at all, like this, okay, if it doesn't stay locked in on that path that I'm taking it, if it starts to get to here and wobbles, that could be a number of things. Mostly, most likely probably glute strength, okay? Because my glute is what controls that movement there my femur moving out and moving in, okay? So that's where that banded work becomes really important. All right, if you're done with your lunges or our split squats, we're into everyone's favorite part of the evening, planks. Three sets of 90 seconds, okay? Three sets of 90 seconds. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do all three of these with you guys. So I'm bringing the camera down to the carpet rather than being lazy, rather than being lazy and saying, hey, I'm only gonna do one and then come and look at you guys. So even if Luna tries to tackle me here, I'm gonna do all three sets with you. Luna might do one as well. All right, so 90 seconds, minute and a half, that's no joke. That's a good plank, good solid plank. Come into position, elbows directly, elbows directly underneath your shoulders. Okay, so here, Okay, I don't want to see anyone with elbows like that. Okay, that's no good for us. That puts us into a really funny anterior loaded position with our shoulders. We don't want. We want that, that, that bone here. We want our upper arm to be straight up and down. Here we go. Three, two, one. 90 seconds. You'll have to take my word for it that my toes are, my knees are off the ground because I can't. I'll, I'll, I'll prove it on the next one but trust me, they are. You'll see how much I struggle in a second. <clears throat> Great work, guys. Good job. Good job. That's perfect. Good job, Chase. Good job, Sarah. Good job, Matty Polglaze. Rock solid. You look like you can do your maths homework in that position, mate. You do not look phased at all. Good job. <laughs> I can barely breathe. Matt's reading a book. Okay, stay there, we're, we're good. We're 40 seconds, we're nearly halfway. Stay strong, don't rock around, don't move. I know the, the, the temptation is to move around and shift your body up and down, things like that. Just stay locked in. Breathe, control your breathing, squeeze your glutes. If you come out of your plank, that's okay, come back in. Okay, try and keep a, a track of how long you came out for. So if you do a minute and a half, but you come out for 30 seconds, that's still a minute plank, that's really good. For some of like under 12s, under 14s, that's still elite. A minute plank is really good stuff. We've got 20 seconds to go here. Keep working. Here we go, 10 seconds. Yeah. 
Here we go. Three, two, one, and rest. Good job. Knees down. Well done. We've got 30 seconds break and we go again. Whew. 30 seconds break. Well done, guys. Good work. This is no joke. 90 second plank. You can do these. You get through three sets, even if you have to take a break every now and then. It's a really good effort. We're going to get in 10 seconds. I'm going to sh change the angle of my camera so you can see that I'm in a full plank. Three, two, one. Here we go. Good job. Here we go. Let's work. Good work, guys. You can do these on your knees. You can come to knees. There's no issues at all. You just challenge. You're really only competing against yourself. <clears throat> Control your breathing. Big deep breath in, big deep breath out. That's 30 seconds. Good work. Good job, keep working. Halfway, 45. If you need a break, come out, stretch it out, come back down. It's a minute, 30 seconds to go. Keep working. If you come down, that's fine. Just count how long you come down for, come back up. Great job, guys. Keep working. I see you, Shep. I see you, Sarah. Keep working, Sarah. Good job. Can't see you, Henry. I'd be lying if I said I could see you, but good job. Five seconds, here we go. Three, two, one, come down. Good work. One more set, one more set. Finish off strong, abs of steel. We're gonna be the, we're gonna be the strongest club in Australia. I guarantee it. Stretch it out if you have to. A few cat and cow positions. Get that sort of ab stretch, arch your back. Move through that, get the blood moving. Here we go again. Three, two, one. Into position. Woo. Let's go, let's push it. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, uh, keep going, guys. Keep working. Uh. I'm gonna get my butt down, that's not good form. Keep working, 30 seconds. Keep your elbows under your shoulders. You probably can't see it here, but I am sweating profusely. This is hard work. We're halfway, halfway, finish off. Shoulders are starting to burn a little bit as well. There's upper body mixed in with this. Oh, oh, Luna's taking a swipe at me. Keep going, we've got 30 seconds. Keep going. Oh. <laughs> Luna's trying to chew my hands up. Keep going, 15 seconds, keep working. We're nearly done. Calf raises to finish. Ah, oh, Luna, get out of it. 10 seconds. Three, two, and rest. Woo! Good job, guys. Oh, great work. Calf raises to finish off. Oh, calf raises to finish off. So, again, if you've got a wall nearby, Got something you can use to balance. That's a good option. I'm just going to do two legs at once because we are just past 6 30 now. So if anyone has to run, go for it if you've got dinner. Otherwise, 25. Three sets of 25 calf raises. We'll have about 20 seconds rest in between. Here we go calf raises for 25. One, Two, three, four, five, jump, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten. You guys can count. I don't need to keep counting. Well, keep working. Fifteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. One, two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. If you need a break, have a break. Twenty seconds minimum break. Twenty seconds minimum. All right. Remember what I always say. This is not. This is not one set of seventy-five. It's three sets of twenty-five. Great job, Sarah. Doing them on a single leg. I see you working. Good job. Keep pushing yourself. All right, let's go for that second set. Let's go for that second set. Here we go. Second set, the 25, and we're nearly done. One, two, three, four. Up onto the ball of our foot. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 10, 19, 20, five more, 21, 22, 23, 25, good work, 25, one more set, so 20 seconds rest. Here we go, 20 seconds and we're straight into it. Last set, here we go. 25, away we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, twenty. Keep working. Fifteen, ten to go. Sixteen. 25 to go, one, two, three, four, and five. Good job. Grab your foam roller if you need it, if you want to finish off. Foam roller glutes, foam roller glutes really quickly. They get a pretty good workout in that session. Glutes, get that right leg up on that left knee, back and forth, open up that hip a little bit. If you don't want to do this together, you don't have to. You can go inside and do this if you're doing this exercise outside. If you want to turn your camera up and do this, or if you just want to sign out, please feel free to sign out. <clears throat> We've got Cassie's, uh, for those that want to jump in tomorrow morning, it's Cassie's last hoop skip session. Um, Cassie actually leaves for college, so she's going to the States on Friday. She flies out on Friday, so if everyone wants to tune in, uh, say goodbye to Cassie, give her a send off, give her a farewell, that'd be fantastic. Uh, she's on at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, you know you've got me again Thursday night, we do a little bit of cardio, a bit more of this sort of stuff, two different exercises and balance. Some cardio, make sure you do your calves, don't mind the calves. Uh, and then Friday morning, we've got body and mind. Uh, we're actually, we're just having a bit of fun now. We've got uh, Kira Rowe, who's going to take Body and Mind for us Friday morning. She's actually in hotel quarantine up in Sydney. Uh, she's playing for Sydney Uni this year in the WNBL. She flew up there last week. So she's in hotel quarantine and because she's a Pilates. She's learning Pilates. She's offered to, uh, to run the session for you guys on Friday morning. So you won't have to listen to me jabber on too much. So always good to have those uh, actual professionals involved rather than just me taking the sessions. And calves, if you need to do any mobility or stretches to finish off, I always suggest just basically doing our warm up in reverse is probably good practice. So if you'd like to go through uh, your Spider-Man squat and some calf pumps against the wall, that's a good idea. Otherwise, that's all from me, guys. Have a great night. I saw a comment just come up, but I haven't had a chance to read it. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank oh, you. Nice. Saw Cassie today. Great. Excellent. Thank All you. Right, guys. See you later. Have a great See ya. Night. Hey guys. Cheers, bye. No worries. Good on you, Henry. Thank you. Bye. See ya. <laughs>